OK, so let's look at similarity and matching and how we can take two different data entities and see how similar uh, they are to each other. So the three main areas we'll look at are similarity metrics. Can we get a scoring system that tells us how close one uh, data element is to another? Whether it's possible for us to create hashes of the, uh, the messages, the, the data objects that we have, and to see if we can create a thing called a similarity hash that would allow us to measure the differences between uh, two data elements. And then we'll look at a powerful technique within cybersecurity, and that's the usage of regular expressions to be able to search and mine for uh, data elements. OK, so let's first look at uh, similarity. So with similarity, uh, we need to make sense of uh, of uh, searching uh, for uh, our data elements. The human brain is fairly good at this and it can take something fairly complex, such as this grid, and to be able to find uh, words quite quickly. So the human eye is good to be able to be trained on uh, finding things with inside complex uh, uh, infrastructures. You can see another one there. And uh, it, it, it's not too difficult to be able to find elements because the human eye and brain obviously know where to look to find that similarity. But we might also be looking at things like credit card details. In this case, we have two credit card details. And what we want is to be able to find uh, a method that allows us to be able to find the uh, format of a, of a credit card number in different types of formats. So we might have a dot or a, or a slash or a hyphen in there, but when we search, we're able to find uh, things that look similar to this. This gives us what's called true positives, where we actually find credit cards or false positives where we identify something that isn't a credit card as a credit card. So there are various methods that we can look at when it comes to text uh, searching and to find similarity. The most basic is the edit uh, dif difference, edit distance method. And in this, we look at the changes between one uh, text string and another and the amount of uh, changes that we'd have to make to insert or delete uh, the uh, characters within within a, a string. So the main methods that we'll see in here, the Levenstein uh, method, uh, Needleman Wunsch, uh, Smith Waterman and a few other different methods can be used. Then we get uh, block uh, methods. These are token based ones and it's where we're identifying uh, typically delimiting by a, a, a space uh, different blocks of text. So once we identify the blocks, then we can uh, uh, we can try and search for the same block within another set of uh, of the string. Then there are Jarrow methods which allow us to be able to look at character transpositions between two different uh, strings. And then finally, we have the QGrams method, which will look at two or three or four uh, character sequences and then try to match them into other two or three or four character sequences with inside uh, another string. If you look at how well these methods perform, we can do a quick uh, assessment here looking at different ways to assess it. So let's look at the loss of a of an insignificant word, such as an and or 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 it and, and so on. So in this case, uh, we're looking at the matching between loans and accounts and loan accounts. In this case, we see that the, the block methods or the token methods work best because uh, they will be matching uh, certain words with inside the as the two strings. The distance methods do okay too, uh, but not quite as good as the as the block methods. When it comes to small changes, such as we've lost the S here, we can see that the block methods don't work quite as well as the uh, distance uh, uh, measurements in this case. 
And then when it comes to the rearrangement of words, such as loans and accounts and accounts and loans, we can see the block methods work very well here. And they are optimized to be able to find blocks of similar text, no matter where they are within inside the, uh, the, the strings. The distance methods don't work as well here because we're moving a lot of characters around and there obviously to be a penalty towards that. When it comes to punctuation, then the distance methods probably do quite well here and the block methods not so good because the punctuation uh, stops the, um, the blocks from being uh, matched. Case, well, none of the methods do that well because typically the case of the characters matter so that uh, an O, a capital O is seen as, as a different character to a lowercase O. And when it comes to spacing, the distance methods do very well, but the block methods don't do well at all there uh, because we typically delimit through the, the space uh, between the words. So if we wanted to try an example here, we'll say hello and goodbye. And we try the same again. If we go for, uh, we'll misspell that there. So we can see here distance methods do fairly well on that one, but not so good in some of the block methods. But a block method will do well when we're moving uh, our characters around. See it scores well there, even if we uh, move a little bit, we can see we're still getting a good score uh, uh, here. Okay, so the different methods are really there to uh, to allow us to focus on 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 different ways of analysis uh, analyzing uh, the differences with inside the, the the text. So for this method, we have a distance method, and what we would do is lay out our two strings that we have. And here they are. We have apple cane and apple core without a P there. So what we have is that we have a, we take the penalty from a previous one, or the score from a previous one, and then we'll add on a, a plus one if we have to insert or if we have to delete a, a character. So in this case, we would have to uh, uh, delete one character. Uh, so that we end up with a penalty of one there, then a penalty of two, three, and then so on. And here we uh, have a match, so we don't have any penalty, but the next one we would have to insert another P value to be able to uh, get to this here. Okay, so we can draw the grid like this and it will give us our, our penalties. The score that we get then becomes the least score as we go through our matrix and we have it here and then we can actually drop down to there or we could go along to there. So the overall penalty or the distance that we have is, is four. We would need four changes uh, of this string to be able to make the other string. But we can then define that as a percentage similarity and that relates to the length of the string and the, the distance that we've measured and that will give us the similarity score. Okay, so we can run a very simple node.js program to be able to assess this. And if you remember, we had a score of four for this one. Let me just make sure that's still working. So we have a, a score of three uh, but we have Apple Cane. And we get a score of four there. And we can change this. And this should improve the score. And we can now see that we get a score of 89 and only a distance of one. And the reason that we're getting that is because we would have to ins do one insert there to be able to uh, it matched the, the two strings. Okay, so sometimes we can represent it like that to show what the match is. That's where our penalty is that we need to insert a character or delete it from the other the other one. And uh, I'm 
and even better methods uh, in, in some cases is the Needleman Wanch method. And in this case, what we have is that if we match, we get a, a, a score of plus one. If there's a mismatch, then it's a minus one. And if we need to insert or delete a character, then it's a score of minus two. We can then draw our grid as before, and we give penalties uh, and the scores to each, each uh, element. So you can see that matches there. So we get a score of one, that matches, we get another score of one and so on. But then we'd have to do an insert an insertion of a character here. So we'll lose two to get zero. And then we can go down the grid and the red gives us the uh, the actual match that we have uh, there. Okay, so in the end we get as plus for a match and for this one, we need to do an insertion, so that's a score of minus two, so we get two minuses. And overall, we get a score of zero in, in, in this case. The Smith-Waterman method is quite similar uh, with the scoring that we get, but we make sure that all the negatives become a zero. Then we move through it until we get the highest uh, score. Uh, and that becomes our end point. So you can see the match that we have is there. So it's A, P, insert, L, E, C, and then we end uh, here uh, for, for, that, for that one. Okay, so, so each method themselves will give us different scores for uh, the number of changes that we have, and it will give us a basic measure. In some cases, what we have is phonetic uh, matching. So it could be where someone has tried to sp spell a word and then spelt it in incorrectly. So we might have a word like castle, and castle sounds like a K-A-S-E-L, castle, and that's phonetically, that is ka se -e -l. And that's defined from a phonetic uh, alphabet. So every word can be pronounced by these uh, phonemes that we have here. And each one, a b is the, is the b in big, and then the d is the dare, and, and so on. So what, we, what would be useful is that if we wanted to search for certain words, then we might want to search for them in terms of the phonetic matching. So one method for this is called Soundex, and what it does is it tries to find two words that will that match uh, when they are pronounced uh, together. So we might be looking at surnames and to find the a surname that is pronounced in a similar way. For this, we get rid of these uh, letters, and we then uh, take these and represent them with a number. So if we take this word here, then we start with the first character, which is the B, and then the U doesn't count, so we go to a C, and a C gives us a 2, so we have a 2, and then all of these characters don't count until we get to an N, and then an N is a 5, and then another 5 in there. So B255 uh, relates to this, this word here. We get some strange ones like Lee, is just L and then three zeros because there is E doesn't actually count. Okay, so we can see here we have Taylor and Taylor here. And the great thing about this is that they match with their code. We can also use a, 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 a New York accent. I can see here that Taylor comes out as Taylor and it, the other tailor becomes as tailor. So this allows us to be able to match towards different uh, pronunciations. And then there's an, another one called a phonics uh, that we can also do the matching for. And here we see our, our other metrics that we have, like Jarrow and uh, the distance measurements. So we'll have a look at the coding uh, for this. So if we take an example of uh, Taylor and Taylor, hopefully we'll get a match there. 
and we can see that that we do. Uh, if we try Miller and Muller, again we see there's a match in there. But if we take one that uh, doesn't match, so we'll try this, this, these two here, we see that we get different codes in, in there. Okay, so, so this gives us another way of measuring uh, whether we can uh, match some th uh, uh, different words through their phonetic spelling. Another method that we have is what's called similarity hashes and whether it's possible to take a hash of a large message and get it down to a very small hash value and then to compare the two, ha two hashes of the, uh, the words that we have. So this is one method here uh, that looks at similarity and the great advantage of this method is that we can produce different lengths, different lengths of hashes for the strings. So the longer the string we use, the more accurate we can represent lots of different strings and so on. So we can see in this case uh, we have one string and a second one and we're only changing one of the words and we're getting a fairly good match. There's the uh, hashes themselves look, uh, the bits in them look quite similar and it's the number of bits that are actually changing is the, will, will show us how similar they, they are. So if we try uh, some examples here. Okay, that was the first one here. If we try two that are identical, we'll see that we get a similarity of, of 1.0. Now we'll try with different words and we can see here, this is the, it's the same, but these two words here are, are, have changed place and two new words have been inserted. Is this a match or not? And we can still see that we're getting a fairly good match for that one in, in there. If we try a totally different sentence uh, in this case, so there isn't too much the same in this one, uh, we get a lower value here for our, our matching. Okay, so in this case we're using a little bit of Python code for this. And a method that's used in uh, the detection of spear phishing is this hashing, a similarity hashing method. And what it does is it takes uh, a small uh, three letter sequences and tries to match them into some sort of hash so that we can actually see when, when these three letter sequences actually match to each other. So we'll try this one and we can see here we're getting a score of 89 for this one. If we try again then we can see it's still getting a fairly good uh, score there. But then if we change this, uh, we can see that the score is going down as our strings are, are matching less. Okay, so this is the maximum score here, 128 for the, in this case, uh, for these two, two messages. We'll try one, we're dropping down to uh, 189. And where this is good uh, is in terms of spear phishing. In this case, these two messages are actually fairly similar. It's just that the name has been changed, but we still get a very high score for our similarity hash. And, and uh, uh, we'll try one that's a little less. Fewer matches. I can see here the words look, still looks quite similar. It's giving us a score of 86 and we'll drop it right down until we get two messages that are completely different and we can see here that the score becomes one or there is no matching between the, the two, uh, the, the two uh, strings. Okay, so here's an example, perfect match, pretty good matches here, uh, still pretty good there, this one, uh, it's not so good, but then we go right down to here and we're getting a score of, of 1. Okay, so there's the examples there. 
we've showed a good score of 108 there. One of the most powerful methods that we have within cybersecurity for being, for searching for things, remember that we're often looking for a needle in a haystack, is the usage of regular expressions. And in this, we can look for similarity in the matches. We might be looking for uh, email addresses, IP addresses. We might be looking for a MAC address, a certain MAC address that we know a little bit about. So regular expressions are regular expressions are very powerful in terms of being able to search our, our data infrastructures and then be able to pick off uh, our, our data elements that we're looking for. So the basic format is this. So we define different character sets with inside our square brackets. So zero to nine will match uh, numeric values, A to Z for lowercase, A to big Z for uppercase, and we can also add numbers on there, and tildes and so on. That provides uh, the character sets that we're looking for. We can then modify that by uh, defining uh, the number of characters that we're actually looking for. So in this case, we're looking for four numeric uh, values to match. So if it only had three, it would match. If I had five, then it would only match the first four uh, in, the, in the, the, the value. Okay, so we can also match a certain uh, digit uh, with a uh, with slash D, if we need that. Uh, if we uh, want to uh, match a single character, it's a dot. And if we want to match, uh, let's see, we want to match a, a T or an A, then we would draw it like this. So this is the OR operator uh, there. If we want to match one or more characters, we can have a question mark uh, after it. And if we want to match anything at the end of a, of a string, we will put a dollar sign at the end and it will match at the, from the end of a, of a string. Slash S gives us a space. So here's an example here uh, for defining the year. So this might be 1983. So that would be four characters here. This one here defines a numeric value of uh, three characters with either a, 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 a hyphen or a dot. Then we have four characters, a hyphen and a dot, and then uh, four digits after that. This one here, will match a telephone number that looks like uh, that. Uh, to match a credit card, uh, Visa starts with a four. We can then have three numeric values followed by a space or uh, a hyphen. After that, four characters, space hyphen again, and then again, this will match uh, a Visa card in there. For IP addresses, we can have either 1 to 3, so we can have 1.2.3.4, we can have 10.10.10.10, and then we can have 250.250.250. So we can have 1, 2, or 3 numeric values, so we can find that there with that, then with a dot, and then so on from, from there. Okay, so in this way we can actually uh, build up fairly complex uh, uh, searches using these regular expressions. So we can either code it with Python uh, or most other programming languages, or we can use a, a simulator to be able to uh, uh, analyze our regular expressions. So let's look at the Python example first. Okay, so it's just a little bit of code here. Uh, this is us defining the regular expression. This is the string here. We import our regular expression library and we're just using the search. The search only will, in this case, will only find the first occurrence of something. So in this case, what we're looking for is something that looks like an email address. So it's those characters, then an at, and then uh, something after it, and it's matched it to here. 
it's only matched the first bit, so it's not a very good uh, regular expression, but it's matched to that one there. If we now wanted to search for uh, an IP address, we can use this one. So hopefully it will match this one. And it might even match that one if we allow it to go past the first one. But in this case, it only finds the first one. So it's finding this one here. For our credit card, we'll try that one. So here's our credit card. It starts with a four. And I think our credit card is in here. This is a visa, uh, visa card. And we'll see if it can find that one there. And, and, it, and it does. Okay, so we'll just take a copy of that one and we'll try and use that in our other example. Okay, so a good way to prototype uh, this is with inside this regex101.com. So in this way we can put in, say, our, our data and then we can try out our regular expression and we should get lots of help in actually making sure that it's going to work okay. Then we can go and produce our Python code, Golang, uh, whatever we want. So we'll try our, uh, our Visa card uh, detector there. So we can see in this case, it's managing to find this one uh, here uh, for that one. This is a, uh, uh, this is searching for uh, the first one. And if we want to search for a uh, multiple ones, and that's our, that's our first one there. And if we wanted to say, just go for four characters, say, then we can see now that it's matched two of these starting from the, uh, this sequence in, in here. Sorry, it's, it's matched this part uh, without the the starting four and then this one if we only want to be able to find uh, one the first one we take the the global uh, string off of it okay this is a string here that we would use and we can see there is a modifier at the end that will give us the the actual string that we're looking at. So now we have a slash mg at the end of our string. And when we go to our Python code, we should be able to see uh, that that is actually uh, created uh, for us for our, within our code generator. Okay, so we can go here and this will actually build our string uh, for us as we require. Okay, so, so there are various other uh, options that we can uh, go for. We'll just see if we can find another example here. So this one here is our IP address finder. Okay, so in this case, it's managed to find one here and another one, but we can see we have a false positive in terms of this. So this is a, looks like a MAC address here uh, with dots, and we can see that we have a false positive. So it's not always perfect in, in what we actually search for, and we will get false uh, uh, positives uh, within our, our search. Let's try one more. And in this case, we'll look for a, say a telephone number. Okay, so again, it's giving us uh, false positives there, but it's at least finding the first one there. 
Uh, let's get them confused with these two Visa cards in there. So we'd often try to be able to focus our regular expression to be able to give us good uh, true positives, but not to miss out any key uh, data. Okay, so that's been an introduction to similarity and matching.